Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, Dr. Cole and I had a, had a brief conversation before the meeting that, that um, I brought this up. He was inquiring about the, the status of, of this reference project, the, the Gilead-Lamont uh, exchange. Uh, to refresh the board's memory, um, back in June, uh, the board authorized staff to uh, begin negotiations on a, um, a proposed exchange where the district would trade its fee interest in 114 acres along the Oscilla, but retain a conservation easement over that property. And, exchange, and in exchange for that, we would get a conservation easement over 75 acres farther up on the, on the Oscilla. It would be you know, conceptually a value for value uh, exchange. In basically every acquisition project, every real estate um, transaction that, that we undertake now, we have guidelines from DEP where they want uh, certain <coughs> information and in some cases uh, require that they approve a project uh, before it uh, comes to fruition. And so we factor that into our overall process and we'll, after y'all authorize us to, to go into negotiations, we'll do appraisals and all that work. We'll put everything together and we'll send it up to, to DEP uh, to get their review before we bring it to the, uh, the board for um, final action. And that's basically where we are with, with this project. Um, we sent information up on this, we thought, pretty simple exchange. And um, there was some communication back and forth, but you notice on uh, November 25th, Richard Rocco got this, this uh, email from Donna Ruffner. And let me say for the record that um, I've known Donna Ruffner for 25 years, and she's as helpful and dedicated a public servant as there is. I think very highly of, of uh, Ms. Ruffner. But um, the issue really today is, is point number two, where it seems that they are now um, asking district staff to go out and engage um, the environmental community up front and then um, report to DEP uh, the results of that engagement uh, before DEP will give us to go ahead on a, on a project. I've got some later communication that uh, indicates that basically this is being asked of all the water management uh, districts now. So that kind of kind of brought us to a little bit of a, a stop on this because you know we're not exactly sure how to how to how or whether to, to uh, uh, go forward with this. They're asking for us to respond to give them a response of the environmental uh, yes, response. Yes, sir. That's that's the way I read this. Didn't work very well on Ellaville. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did what they asked for Ellaville, and it, they didn't, the environmental groups involved did not, they changed their position after we went forward. Why would, she, why would we be, why should we be giving their information, I mean, what they, how they feel to anybody? I mean, they can give it to us and we can take that, but if they got, they want to give it to somebody, I mean, they need to, they need to show up and give it to them. It's and I encourage this to be on our agenda. It's shocking. I mean I, I mean, I just don't think that's our responsibility to take everybody's. I mean, if you, you do it for them, you got to you got to give everybody that that position, and then report on every special interest group that gave you any information. Mr. Chairman, I've been doing this for a while, and it's my understanding that's why we we held public hearings. Right. Thank right. You. Right. Help you make that decision. Well, once you make it. Time, they're welcome to show up and yeah. make their comments. Yeah. Or they can play them a note and then wait till the last minute. Like the well, Charles Lee did speak against it. What? Against the the Ellaville exchange. He came to one of the um, committee meetings, let's, subcommittee let's, meetings. Let's, let's, yeah, and spoke let's, against let's it. Let's be clear. Yeah. Charles Lee came to the surplus lands meeting. He stated his issue. He said he thought we ought to take two actions to be clear with the procedure and declare the Ellaville property not needed for conservation and then do the deal 
We did everything that he suggested that we do. I misunderstood. My mistake. Our meetings are publicized in advance. They're public meetings. They're very informal. We let anybody speak that wants to speak, and we try to accommodate all reasonable comments. We have done that from the beginning. This is a strange request. So we'll obviously, you know, follow whatever um, direction the board would like to get. Well, this talks about environmentalists. Are we going to go out to all the hunting groups? I mean, when we decided to do a private lease, we got half a dozen of them to come after us. And then if, if that's the case, how about the fishermen off the Gulf? And how about the people that want private airports? I mean, you can go on and on and on. This is silly. That's why we have public meetings. And can I make a comment? Sure. Um, how many people came to your first meeting when you talked about surplusing public lands before there was a surplus lands committee? If I recall, there was a, a pretty big turnout. You talked about surplusing some of the land around Usher Landing in Chiefland, and there was a pretty big turnout. I think in general the public isn't for surplusing lands. I think in general the environmental community would like to see you hold on to the land you have. I, I, I understand in general, what you're saying, but my, I would say in general, I would disagree. In general, most people want us to surplus right. lands. Right. The, the the outspoken minority absolutely don't want. The How many people have come to you saying they want you oh, to sell? Can I go to the grocery store. <laughs> no. That's the only thing they tell you. When I come here, I, none of them show up. Well, everybody, at the, everybody, when I walk down the, at the grocery store, come, man, I'm gonna tell you something. I saw y'all were surplusing lands. That is something that should have been done for the last 30 years. You own too much land. You, the state has no business with this. I mean, I hear it time after time after time. But, but then you get here. You know what? They probably got jobs. They don't show up. <laughs> so they call me on the phone. They send me emails. The county won't eat this. Well, let, let's be real clear again. We, we advertised our surplus lands meeting, and about the first two meetings, only staff and committee were there, simply because they didn't, weren't aware of it, didn't pick up on it. Okay? And so we had our meetings and started getting organized. Then they picked up on it, and the, the next probably four or five meetings, we had half a dozen, and, and a bunch of those were lawyers representing different environmental groups. Really? Charles Lee was one, and there were you know, two or three others that were, had, they were attorneys. And they were very helpful. They expressed their concerns. They let us know, hey, we're the ones that, that lobbied to get money that you've used to buy this land. We're very concerned about what you're doing. And we, with Joe's leadership, established a program directive that has guidelines and a lot of words that they helped us develop and quite frankly, once that was put in place and approved by this board, they quit coming because they decided they could trust us. We said, we're not going to take this money and spend it on anything else but better land, and we're going to use these guidelines, and we're going to publish what we're doing. And they quit coming to our meetings until we saw Charles Lee at this one about Ellaville. We hadn't seen him in a year. So that's where we're at with this process. Plus, other districts have attended our meetings because they wanted to learn what we had done and pick up on it. And well, I think we've been very responsive to them, and I mean, just I mean, you make a very good comment. I mean, one of the surplus lands was that uh, South Manatee. People brought some concerns to us. It's not on the surplus lands. Anymore. I mean, you know, if if it, if it makes sense and you can convince the board and his staff that that's a good you know good way to go. I did, maybe we're making a making a mistake that we should reconsider. I mean, we we reconsider things all the time. You know, uh, I think we're very responsive to, but I don't. I just don't think it's our position or our responsibility to take everybody's position <coughs> to to the lands council. I mean, I'm just, you know, that doesn't make sense. <coughs> continue to work through the process. Now we're done. Okay. Well we gotta do the iPad thing. Now you are out playing around.